At the end of this video, you will know how to create your own YouTube channel graphics using Fomora 11. Keep watching! everyone, it's Chloe from Wondershare from Wondershare here to empower your inner video creator. Last year, we made a video about how to create a subscribe button using Fomora 10. And this year, we're going to show you an even more advanced tutorial. We're going to make this animation in Fomora 11. Let's go! First, let's open Fomora 11 to get started. Let's go to sample color and find the bright green solid clip and add it to the first video track. Let's lock this track now as I won't be using it again. Now, let's go back to the sample color and stack a white solid clip on top of the green clip. And add another red solid clip on top of the white clip, just like this. Then, let's go to the effects window and find the crop effect. Drop this effect to the white and red clips on the timeline. Okay, with the three clips ready, let's start shaping each of them. I'm going to start with the white clip first as it's our base layer in the graphics. Click on the eye icon to disable this video track. I'm going to double click on the white clip to open its properties here. Let's go into effects to start cropping the white clip now. But first, let's click on this display icon in the viewer and click on the safety zone tab. The guidelines will make it easier to align our elements. Now, use these sliders to create a long rectangle on the bottom of the screen. Make sure it's aligned within the safe zones. Next. I'll crop the red sample clip into a subscribe button. Let's place it close to the right. Now, I'll add the channel photo. In this example, I'm using this stock image from the Unsplash tab here. Drop the photo to the timeline. Then, double click on the photo and add a circle mask like this. Go down to the horizontal and vertical sliders. Make sure the numbers match for an even circle. I'm going to scale the shape down and position it to the far left. Now, let's add the main title. This is to add the channel name and video description in the graphics. Let's align it to the right of the channel photo. Then, add another title. This is going to be the subscribe button text. I'm going to align it with the red solid clip. Okay, let's head over to the elements window and pick some icons we need for the social media tab. I'm going to use this mouse cursor first. Let's add this bell icon too. If you play this bell, you will notice there's already an animation. But I want the graphic to be simpler. So let's find the frame right before the animation Right click and then add a freeze frame here. Now, I'm going to trim it so it fits our animation. Next, let's do the same with the thumbs up icon. Also, let's scale them down and position on either side of the subscribe button. Now, let's start animating. First, let's start from the white solid clip. Double click on it and then go to the animation tab. Add a keyframe with the current properties to the white solid clip. Move the playhead to the beginning and place the white clip out of the frame. A new keyframe has been created of this white solid's current properties. It will look like this. Then, let's do the same to the red solid clip. Now, apply the same keyframe to all the graphics and icons and have them move up from the bottom. The whole animation looks like this. Next, let's double click on the subscribe text. Go to the text tab under animation and click on the typewriter animation. I want to customize it a bit, so let's click on advanced here. Since I want the text to animate in quickly, I'll move this tab closer to the beginning. And I also want subscribe to animate in as soon as the red button appears. So I'm going to move this tab to the end so it animates out. Alright, looks good. Next, let's animate the mouse cursor. I'm going to position it out of the frame and add a keyframe. Then move it above the thumb up icon 
As you can see, the cursor is behind the element. To fix this, I'll drag the mouse cursor onto the very top video track. To animate the click of the cursor, let's add a keyframe of the current cursor size, which is 5.9. Move the playhead forward and add another keyframe. Change it to 3.9. Then, let's add another keyframe with the original size, 5.9. Now, add a keyframe that holds the exact position of the cursor. After that, I'm going to move the cursor over the subscribe button and repeat the same steps. Okay, let's see what it looks like. I think the animation happens too quickly, so I'm going to space out the keyframes a bit. The closer your keyframes are, the faster your animation will be. And the further apart they are, the slower it will be. Let's repeat those steps one last time for the notification bell. Now, I'm going to animate the cursor to leave the frame. Using our mouse cursor animation as a guide, let's animate our icons. Find the first click and repeat the size keyframing we did with the mouse cursor. Double click on the thumbs up layer. I'm going to add a keyframe of the current size, which is 17.4. Move forward a bit and scale it down to 11.7. Then back to 17.4. Keep adjusting the keyframe until they fit the cursor animation. Then, repeat these steps for the subscribe button and the bell animation. Now, let's animate out the graphics. Place the playhead at the end of the timeline. Let's start from the bottom. Double click on the white solid clip and add a keyframe of the current properties. Then move to the end of the layer and place the solid clip out of the frame. Like this. And let's repeat the step to all the graphics except for the text. Essentially what we're doing now is reversing how our graphics are animated in. Let's adjust the main title. Double click on it and open the advanced title tab. I want the main title to animate out before every other graphic leaves the frame. And that's our animation all done! Now, let's export it! If you want to keep reusing this graphic for all your videos, Head over to the Shared Media tab and import it there. Now, every time you open up a new firmware project, you'll be able to use it without importing it again. Just drag it onto your timeline, double click on it. Then, enable the chroma key to remove the green solid in the background. As none of our graphics are green, they won't be affected by the chroma key effect. And now, you can add your footage under this graphic for all your future videos. And there you go! That's how to create your very own YouTube channel graphics using Firmware 11. We'd love receiving video suggestions, so let us know what you want to learn in the future videos. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for new videos on the channel. Keep creating and see you next time!